Julia's reflection in her sermon on the presence of God in the natural world resonated with me. I am frequently struck by how present God is in the natural world, how evident he is in his creation, how loudly, in other words, the heavens are telling the glory of God. I am struck by how fitting the world is, and how instruction about God and faith can be found in the most basic things and the facts of human life. When, for example, we kneel to pray, we are in a position ill-prepared for action. Kneeling is a poor position to start from if we either want or need to suddenly run. At once, our body language reinforces human ineffectiveness before God and dedicates our attention to God in that moment. Here's a line from today's reading, Numbers 11.23. The Lord said to Moses, Is the Lord's power limited? God does not act under compulsion. God did not suffer death because he had to, or because it was the only way he could achieve his purpose. St Thomas Aquinas articulated the idea that God has worked out creation, salvation and our being in the way that was most fitting. God did not need to be born into poverty, but he was, and we can learn from this perhaps that God does not value the pomp and circumstance of earthly kings for its own sake. Gold does not interest God, why should the creator be in awe of his creation? Similarly, God did not need to die a humiliating death on the cross. He chose to do so, to share visibly in the fullness of humanity, its beginning and its end, to forgive a bandit on the cross by his side. There is of course much more to be said, and many more examples of the way God has enacted his plan for our redemption in a perfect way. I want to try and apply this basic idea to one of today's readings. God could have sated the Israelites automatically or magically. Why did he choose to offer them manna? There is a lot that commends the manna method. There is no force. The people are not magically sated, but instead, God gives them the option to meet him halfway. This finds a beautiful typological mirror in the Eucharist. God does not compel people to accept his offering, but if they do, it has the power to preserve them through the desert. Why do the Israelites have to wander in the desert for so long? Well, perhaps God's provision is all the more evident in a barren land. Why is the manna not exactly what the Israelites want? Why do they complain and ask for meat? Well, surely there is an easy symbolism in something which seems bland, superabundant, and fulfills all needs, but is still passed over in favour of something out of reach. So, I suppose, I hope to encourage people to appreciate something in their life which is just so, which perfectly seems to capture symbolically something about the world, or just works in a perfect way. <laughs>